Welcome into the shop, everybody. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name's Andy Rawls. This is my uh, basically custom furniture shop. I build furniture for clients, um, all kinds of clients, residential, commercial, and this is something I've been doing since 2012. And I've honestly been building furniture since around 2005. So I wanna talk a little bit about some big changes that are happening in the shop. I've hired an apprentice, and I wanna introduce you to him today. We'll talk about that more soon. First off, um, if you've been with me since the start, since I started this channel about four and a half years ago, um, you know there's been a lot of changes with the channel. The first three years of my channel, I saw a lot of growth. It really took off. And I had a really cool little niche where I was just carving uh, things and I had this quiet vibe and people loved it and really caught on to it. And I still make those videos. I don't make them as often. I kind of made a pivot a little bit away from those uh, for a few reasons. One is I just kind of ran out of the desire to carve things and make things. It just wasn't that motivating. The biggest reason though is I, I've, I've, I've managed this business and my channel as a one man show for most of these last five years. Um, and I've just been spread really thin and it's been hard to uh, stop production in my shop to make YouTube content. Uh, and I've been kind of unwilling to jump fully into YouTube and give up my furniture business and let go of YouTube and go fully into furniture business. So I've just been riding the fence now for a while. And ultimately, I think what's happened is uh, the business has suffered a little bit and the YouTube channel has obviously suffered. Uh, I saw that quick growth in the first three years and it's just kind of been a little flat line. And I'm not one to really worry overly about analytics. It's not my dream in my life or my goals to become some big famous YouTuber. I love making content for you guys. I love sharing my craft and what I do and that's why I make YouTube videos. I have an awesome core group of fans and uh, subscribers who um, are very dependable and I love hearing uh, their feedback in the comments. So um, YouTube is important to me. It's important that I share what I do with you guys, but I'm not really trying to grow some giant, huge, amazing YouTube channel and get super famous which sadly a lot of the younger generation are kind of focused on doing. It's really weird. I ask young kids what they want to do when they grow up and they want to be YouTubers. It's a little bit strange to me. So as I've seen my business grow this year and um, a lot of new orders come in, I've, it's been very obvious to me that I need help. I cannot, I cannot complete this, these furniture orders and, build, and make content and do all that on my own. It's just not possible. Um, it's all going to just kind of slowly die if I continue down that road. And so that's why I have hired an apprentice. Uh, I posted on Instagram about three and a half months ago uh, that I was looking for one and I got a lot of inquiries. It was really humbling and awesome. People all over from the U.S. reached out with interest in working here and I was able to narrow it down to Robert. And um, I got to say, I am incredibly excited. I think I've found an awesome guy to come in here and work. And um, also, like I said, I'm super humbled by it because he literally packed up and moved his family, his wife and a two-year-old daughter uh, from Florida to work here with me. So um, it really is humbling to know that he's willing to uproot and move out here to Texas, which, you know, Texas is pretty awesome. So I can't blame him. He's been here now for almost a week and uh, we've already jumped in and he's making a huge impact, doing an awesome job. We started off the first day doing a walkthrough of some of the equipment. So I want to show you guys some of the stuff we've been up to in the last week um, and I'll give you a chance to meet him. Moving forward, you'll, he'll be in the videos. He's going to be a part of the channel. You're going to be seeing a lot of videos that just go along with the build. You know, me teaching him, you're going to be getting to see that. Um, our dialogue, our communication, I think it's going to add a really cool new dynamic to the channel. And as I finish projects, I'm going to turn around and repost a lot of the builds as quiet videos because I know that's what a lot of you are here for and that's what you love and that's kind of the vintage style I have. I'm not gonna quit posting those for you guys. I will still make the silent videos. Those are just gonna be follow-up videos, which I think is kind of a cool idea. You can see how the whole project was built um, in detail and then you can watch a relaxing, chill video of me just making something, me and Robert. So let's just jump in, I'll show you some footage and you guys will get a chance to meet Robert. And then when I start my cut, I always back it out to where I'm really not gonna cut anything because the worst thing you could do is have a real heavy cut set and just right. go gouging into it. Gouge in it. So I'm not cutting, I'm just gonna make a few slight turns. That was a really light cut, I got a tiny shaving. That's it right there. And you can see how already how much better it's working. Yeah. Okay. There Advancing it is tightening it. Right. You turn this clockwise, it's going to give you more blade. Okay. okay. Counterclockwise is going to bring it back. And it'll pull it back on its own. And yeah, you don't have to do anything. You just. And you can see how far down that's threaded. It's because I've 
shrunk the blade so much sharpening it, so I needed, I really need a new blade on this gotcha. thing. Um, cool. Yeah, man. Let's go at it. Get sweaty. It's gonna be hard work. I like it. <laughs> Do you think every quarter or so, just go by feel when I start feeling it? Yeah, you, you, you should, You'll see, the more you do this, the more you'll know when your plane's right. starting to dull. But yeah, I would think every like, see, I think I've at always, least every half. I've always used a dull plane, so yeah. I, yeah, I didn't know the difference. Well, <laughs> if it wasn't so loud, I can go turn that off, it's done. But you can actually hear the difference okay. and, and the crispness of it. Another thing to get in the habit of is when you're on your backstroke, lift the blade like that, so you're not go. running it. Okay. Because that's just another way to dull the blade faster. Okay. So it's like ride it on its toe when you come back. So forward. Yep. Back. Yep. Okay. Cool. And that's sweet. And it, a lot of it too is knowing where to put the pressure. Right. And that just comes with practice. And also another thing, I'm giving yeah, you a no, million things. No, it's fine. Skewing Please. helps. So. So if I'm going like at an angle, yeah. That is gonna help. It's more of a slicing cut. Now, when it sounds like it's skipping a little bit. You're getting bit, a little chatter. Let me. Is let me, that me or is that? Yeah, I mean, let me see. Let me get a feel here. So, so when I'm starting my cut, I'm putting a lot of downward pressure right here. Okay. The back, my right hand is basically the forward movement, and this hand is pressure. Pressure down. And as I get into the cut, like using a lot of triceps and back shoulders, just weight on the shoulder, a weight on the plane. I mean, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't require so much physical effort if it was an ingrain. An ingrain is just a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's the great thing you too about ingrains. That. You can go any direction you right. want, as long as you're not coming, coming out of off. your cut. Yeah. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, my name is Robert. Um, Andy's new apprentice just started last week. Uh, he's been very kind enough to take me on. Um, I'm really excited to be out here and start this process. Uh, it's only been a few days. I'm already learning a bunch of new stuff, um, which I'm really excited about, especially the hand tool work. Um, we're jumping right into a whole bunch of projects. I think he's overbooked himself for sure, so it was good time in getting out here. Um, I'm married, I have a, one child, so I'm super blessed that they are supportive of this big move. We came from Florida, um, so it's a big move for us and our family, but uh, this is something I've been kind of pursuing on my own for a few years now. You know, I've worked in a uh, sawmill, and I've worked in a door shop, and uh, millwork, uh, factory um, and about two years ago a little over two years I started doing furniture on the side um, and I've really grown to love it you know it's a good opportunity to still be physical uh, but be creative so it's something I was hoping to pursue long term on my own um, and then when Andy posted the opportunity for an apprentice you know I asked my wife what we should do and she encouraged me to jump on it so you know, we shot the email out thinking not much of it, but here we are. Uh, he offered me the position, so I'm out here. I'm super excited about it um, and look forward to everything that we'll be making. Oh, favorite part about Texas so far uh, would have to be the kindness from everyone. Everyone's super uh, thoughtful, uh, generous, and there's a lot of deer, which is super cool. Until I hit one with the car, then I probably won't be saying that.
the big moment is how wide it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, we were at 107, right? 104. 104. Um, I bet we lost a lot, dude. Yeah, I'm going to say, I don't know. It looks great, except for that one board. Except for that one board. Yeah. Which we might be able to move that around a little. And I don't think moving it's going to change it. <laughs> no, but <laughs> it, <laughs> it looks, doesn't look good. It would get it out of the center. Yeah. And some of the joints look pretty good already. Yeah, I, I think you're going to have to do some work, but yeah, yeah. You can go through and pick which ones you like. And 95. 95. So we lost nine inches. So that's five inches. How wide is this? How wide is this, dude? Boom. We can get rid of it. We can take it out. Well, if we have enough to make the circle, right? Yeah. So we might be able to take that out. Let's take it out and then try drawing up the try circle. Try drawing out the circle, yeah. I'll take it. Dude. Unless we get more this way. All right, well, so I guess we we're going to need that board. One more big board. Don't Let's quite have it here either. All right, so this is my baby, man. Yeah. We'll take it down. I always forget. It's upside down, so. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Maybe it's a little confusing. If you, like, give it a little tap. Little drop things that are old like this don't always work. No, that's so, the way it was designed. Yeah, it's a little love tap. It's not pretty, but I <laughs> do it. <laughs> so these are carb. This is a carbide tip blade, uh, Woodmaster blade, and they're they're really expensive, but they last a long time. Sure. Let's see if I got enough room here to do it. So I go down. Yep. You you know how to do this, right? I haven't done it in a while. Okay. okay, it's been a while. So down these two ends together, and then bring these two together, overlap, and it all kind of just falls and it finds its home. Yeah, it takes sense. Time to remember <laughs> yeah. it. Now we used to do that at the sawmill. So we had re yeah, those, those were a lot bigger, like right? Yeah, a little yeah, bit bigger. A lot, lot longer blades. And I think that was the wrong way. Yeah, so that's going Definitely. backwards. So that tilts. If you go back the other way, you can see it's tilted back. Yeah, but the way it works is this takes the tension off of it, and it should just naturally fall forward. Right. But it doesn't want to. So w once I start, see now it's not even touching. If you look back there, I'm trying to, like to make sense of it, well, you can't really see it, but it's, oh, I, I see what it's, it's coming off on. the thing, yeah, right? Yeah. So you have to you have to tap the wheel, push it, so that now it's sitting on there. Yeah, that's the right way. So it's starting to move forward a little bit. And this thing, whole thing has a tendency to want to kick this way. This loosens that. Mm -hmm. And you can actually kind of move it like this. Oh, uh, yeah, I see. And so if, if you get it kind of centered on there, then you tighten this down, it'll stay. It'll stay there. Yeah. That is... Okay, that's this hole or something. Yeah, right it allows it to slide up and down. Okay, so that is kind of, you know, just an oddball video. I wanted to introduce you guys to Robert, let you meet him, see what we've been up to. He's been in the shop now for about a week, um, and he's already making an awesome impact. We've got a lot of projects going on. Uh, he started on Matt's table, um, all those boards over there. Uh, you could see, you saw that in the video as we were laying out that table. We were a little bit short on board, so we're going to order a few more. He also laid up the first blank for three uh, Canon patterns for the Alamo. Again, we're doing more turning on those, so that's going to be happening next month. And then the table rounds. I posted part one of that video. That was my last video. Part two is coming hopefully first thing next week as we finish these up. Um, a little sneak peek here. We've got the joinery finishing up today. Uh, all the bent lambs are all done, and you saw that in the last video, and I'm working on sliding dovetails, and everything is going really smooth. Robert has spent a lot of time prepping the tops. Um, I don't want to show you too much of these because, man, they are impressive. I want to wait, but the grain on these is pretty mind-blowing. I, I, once you sand it and polish it up, uh, it just brings out all that character and figure in the wood, and he spent ten, almost probably, probably around 10 hours between all three 
of these tops, prepping them for finish, and they're ready for finish, just about ready for finish. Uh, so a lot going on, a lot of cool projects in the works. I'm excited to have Robert in the shop. I'm excited to share the journey with you guys. Now, before you guys leave, you know that I have kind of gotten myself involved in a flannel company because flannels are a necessity in the shop. It's muskox. Most of you guys have heard of them. Um, I got some new flannels. I have new flannel colors out, and I want to show you guys because these things are pretty slick. Now, just so you know, I don't get paid. This is not a paid sponsorship. I am a partner with this company, um, and I'm just helping them try to get launched and off the ground. They're doing an amazing job, and I'm excited to see the new colors. They by far make the best flannels I've ever worn, and I am pumped. This is one that I think is super cool right here. Um, I love the colors on this one. Can't go wrong with that. My wife actually picked this one out. She knows better. She usually buys my clothes for me. Yeah, this is a nice looking flannel. Fits fine. Just for reference, I'm 5'9". I wear a medium. Fits me uh, perfectly. Haven't had any issues with shrinking. Um, just an all around good flannel. Christmas is right around the corner. It's a perfect time to get yourself one ordered for a present. It's time for me to get this thing dusty and get back to work. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Be on the lookout for part two of the table rounds, and we're pulling the Argosy out in about a week and a half and doing a big push on it. Also, link is in the description. You get a little discount. Go get yourself a flannel. Get one for your significant other for a Christmas present. I think they'll appreciate it. As always, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.